All right, it's Wednesday. We are a day away from the official part of the NCAA tournament kicking off. I know the playing games, we consider it part of it. All right, we're not, we're not discriminating against the playing games. It's, it's basketball, mm. but we are literally a day away from the true first round of the NCAA tournament kicking off. We got spring football going on, a ton around the corner. Not a better guy to bring on than one of our favorites. You catch him on SEC Network, ESPN, the Mac and Cube Show, the Cube Show, Cube Pod. My man's everywhere. He's basically Carmen San Diego, but we know where he is today. Cole Kublik, what's up, man? How you guys doing? Good to be with you. Hey, you too, brother. It's it's been a while. Uh, it's it's you know good to holler at you at a crazy time of year. Even though I know there's no yeah. quote unquote football being played, we know there truly is no off season. Shout out to our guy Josh Pate there. But I want to start with some with some round ball here. I know you yeah. like myself and enjoy the NCAA tournament. Just your overall thoughts. You know, obviously Auburn being in the East, being a four seed overall with the way that they ended. Uh, just your overall thoughts on on the selection committee, how they did, and are there a couple maybe upsets, a couple teams under the radar that that you're sniffing around liking right now? I, I don't love a lot of what the committee did. I think when you take Auburn and them going through the SEC tournament, I know the teams that they avoided, mainly Tennessee, Alabama, and Kentucky, but it's not Auburn's fault that those teams lost their first game in the SEC tournament you almost wipe that weekend and just say it didn't matter because everybody yeah. you talked to, whether it was Lenardi, we talked to Jerry Palm on the show last week, and they all said, well, Auburn probably can't get to the three line, definitely can't get to the two line, but we got them in as a four. They could drop back to a five. Well, then they end up as a four and they win the SEC tournament. It just doesn't make any sense. And you send them out to Washington into a region that has three conference tournament champions in it. So that, that to me, just I, I didn't really understand it. The Indiana State thing, I kind of don't understand that one either. Um, I get the quad one wins. Like, I understand that that's the thing that people are going to point to. But if that's the only metric that we're using, why do we pay attention to anything else? Why do yeah. we have conference tournaments anymore? Why do we name a regular season champion? Why do we even have any other games? Why don't we just go quad one versus quad one? And then those are the teams that get in. It just it doesn't really, I don't, you know, I don't still understand a lot what happens. The whole geography portion of it, I remember when I was a kid. They at least attempted to make it where fans could drive to the games and go see them. You know, we had games in Birmingham like every year when I was a kid. And I can remember going and watching that Kansas team lose to God Sham God. Not many people can say they saw God win a basketball game. I did yeah. when he played at Providence. He was pretty Donovan. good. So I, I watched that. That was that Arizona team in 97 that came through and won the national title. Bibby and Simon and those guys, I got to see them play. So it was cool for me to just go down there and watch games in general. But – they didn't seem to ship teams across the country like they always do. And I know it's the number one seed and they get the benefit, this, that, whatever, but have the geography make some sort of sense or don't call it the East, West, Midwest anymore. Just call yeah. it something else. So, <laughs> yeah. and then the whole expansion talk that's happening right now, man, that scares me to be honest with you. Like I don't mind adding games, but the removal of AQs to me would be greatly disappointing. I think it's a large piece of what has built this tournament over years and years and years and made it great. And you can say, Fairleigh Dickinson doesn't bring eyeballs, or George Mason doesn't bring eyeballs. You know what? When they win a few games, they do. Yeah. And a lot of people that don't give a damn about this tournament all of a sudden start watching it. And we, when Loyola Chicago makes a run, there's a lot of people like my wife that have no idea what's happening other than she picks some teams and she's trying to win our family bracket that now she wants to tune in and watch. So yeah. that part scares me, but I think this year is going to be great, man, because you look at these one seeds, Purdue has fallen on their face the last couple of tournaments. Houston just scored 18 points and a half <laughs> against Iowa State. So you got to have some doubts there. North Carolina looks pretty athletic. Arizona looks pretty good. But, I mean, I don't know if you have the ultimate confidence that those are just going to march through and be able to get, get home. As far as upsets goes, I'm going to go Moorhead St or McNeese State. Excuse me. I love mm -hmm. Will Wade and the way he coaches this team. They play nasty, nasty defense, man. Like, they have nine players that have double-digit steals on the year. Uh, Hadwell's 18 points a game. Uh, he has 95 steals, third in the nation. And uh, when you have to deal with a guy, Christian Schumate, nine and a half boards and almost two blocks a game, like physically they can be different and they can defend in a way that a lot of teams aren't going to be used to. And he can flat out coach, man. So I think, I think McNeese going to be a problem in the first, maybe even the second round as well. God, yeah. Cole, you hit on so many points. I agree with It's almost kind of scary. Uh, I I'll start here. With you, geography doesn't matter anymore in sports. It doesn't. No. I mean, we have Stanford and Cal that play in the ACC. Like, I mean, we had <laughs> Auburn. If you can, again, I don't think you have to be Christopher Columbus 
to figure out that Auburn and Alabama being in the West when the SEC had divisions and Missouri being in the East was one of the top three dumbest things that I've heard. And I've heard a lot of dumb stuff lately. Uh, just a couple Auburn, notes. Auburn, Alabama, we, and UAB are going to play in Spokane, Washington. It's it's yeah. absolutely in, insane to me. The, the part, I'd say the Big East only getting three teams in. Not that I thought there should have been eight Big East teams in. I don't think St. John should have been in. I find it kind of funny that his son may have been the one that knocked him out of the tournament after New Mexico ended up winning uh, their conference tournament. That That's kind of ironic. But, you know, Seton Hall, I thought was definitely going to be in, um, at winning 13 games in the Big East. Providence, I thought, had done enough at the end. But you get UConn, you know, Villanova, we know has struggled a little bit since Jay Wright's been gone. But I'm with you, man. I, I will say, and, and I'll kick this bad boy over to David, to me, it's always the the 12 five seeds that nobody's talking about that they're going to end up yeah. hitting because all week that five seed is hearing, Hey, McNeese is about to beat y'all's ass. Like y'all McNeese is definitely going to beat Gonzaga. So they don't get snuck up on. But then you look at a team like UAB with Eric Gaines and the way Vasquez is playing and their size playing. Yeah, San Diego. Lindenborg is a double, double machine. Dude, they're right. a problem. AK. I mean, some of the stories of the players on that UAB team are incredible, but David, I mean, it, if there's one team that I think should be the most upset, it's UConn. Yeah. UConn's the number one overall seed, and y'all gave them basically the Hansel of the Male Model Award teams right now. They're the hottest guys out there. And really, that whole East, I mean, Auburn, too. Right now, as we sit here now, I know we're pre-recording this, but I've got Auburn coming out of that East. I mean, Cole, if you had to pick the East region against the field, would you take one of those teams, UConn, Auburn, Iowa State? I mean, there's, there's so many in that region. No, it's tough. And I think Iowa State, because of style of play, it's not overly exciting. They're way underrated. They're flying way under the radar in this tournament. They've been nasty all season. Let's just go back to last year. Also in that region, you've got FAU, San Diego State. Like, they're tournament tested. They're battle tested to an extent. I'm not saying that they're going to be exactly the same. Illinois is a team that easily could have won the Big Ten. Yep. Uh, they play great basketball. They're physical and have good guard play. Drake's a team I think can make a little bit of a run. Mm -hmm. It would be – BYU is always going to play a little bit of a different style. Like, they're going to give you a little something extra. Some people might not like it, but that's just kind of the way that they roll. Um, it would be hard for me to take a team against the field – in the East, because I think there's so many different teams that can come out of it. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm on the other end. I heard an SEC coach in his press conference, you know, getting into the tournament saying, oh, we'll have fresh legs. We don't really mind not winning the SEC tournament. I'll take the momentum yes. and the mm -hmm. confidence that we just built with a Agreed. little bit less in my legs, especially when <laughs> I got four or five guys off the bench that I know can help me and get significant minutes. I think Auburn's in a really good spot. I'm with David. If I had to take one, it would probably be Auburn. And I know that's a little bit of picking with my heart. But I think they they shot over 50% from the floor in five of their last six games. They held three of their last four opponents under uh, under 40% from the floor. Like defensively, they're a different team. They're not great with guard play, but Jani Brooms, I mean, he's a wizard in the post. For man. sure. And so I think physically they can match up with anybody. And they're as deep as anybody. That physicality. You've been talking about their depth for a while, to be honest. Well, what is it? 26 of 27 wins by double digits? Yeah, it's season? it's just yep. it's not just beating people, it's beating people to death. I mean, I was yeah. to be honest with you, I was glad to see us win a game by single digits against Mississippi State, which that was really just a UFC fight that they threw a basketball out there in the middle of. I, I will say too, you don't play until Friday, so you get that extra day yeah. of rest. But a, a, a point that we brought up mo on Monday show, and I don't think people talk about this enough. You know, you look at Iowa State beating Houston, right? You look at Auburn beating Florida. You look at Wisconsin barely losing to Illinois. My whole thing is, I want to be in the easiest region, obviously. I want to have the clearest path. But I just don't want to have to play a team from my conference in the mm. Sweet 16. That's what scares me the most. Because you've already seen each other and probably seen each other multiple times. So there's not going to be any, you know, newness or feeling each other out. I would rather play a UConn team and we haven't played each other all year. We have a lot of similar strengths than have to go play like South Carolina, even though we've beaten by a combined 70 points again, like in the Sweet 16 or like Florida or Tennessee or somebody like that. I don't think enough people talk about that. Houston... I don't think it's going to have that type of performance against a team that hasn't seen them Agreed. yet, as opposed to like Iowa State, because Iowa State's not going to that game scared. They, they they know what to expect. I just think that's an element, Blaine, that doesn't get talked about enough when we get to the NCAA. No, I, I would agree with you. I don't think we'll see that type of performance out of Houston again. But Cole, I do want to get your opinion on two teams that have been nothing but letdowns when it comes to the NCAA tournament. That's Purdue and Tennessee. Which one would you trust more in this tournament right now? I know Tennessee, you add Dalton Connect. It feels like a different yeah. Tennessee team, but can you really trust them to make the run in this tournament? I don't really trust them to make an extremely deep run, but if I'm going one or the other, 
uh, I'm going to go with Tennessee because I think they have multiple players that can fill it up. Dalton Connect being one of them. I mean, I, I don't know. You you guys tell me. I think we'll be on the same page here. Would you rather take a big that could be dominant in the post, offensively and defensively, and that's about all you're going to get from him, or a guard that can facilitate, go out and give you 35 or 40 mm-hmm. on any night, you know, fill it up from behind the three-point line, open things up for other guys on his team, is still an unselfish player even though he can score that way. And you have a guy like Zakai Ziegler who can take over offensively at the same time, and you have some of that physicality in the post like Tennessee does. So I know a lot of people are going to look to the coach on this, and they're going to point to his track record and say they can't get it done there. But I do think the capability that Tennessee has offensively, that firepower, I'll lean Tennessee over Purdue. And the mm-hmm. other thing following up with what Jake said, I agree with you on not wanting to see your conference teams. The other thing that I wouldn't want to see is what potentially Auburn might get in the second round, and that's playing UAB. UAB, yeah. Uh, I think Auburn and Alabama are both lucky that they might not get Buckyball, Sanford in the second round, because uh, Sanford goes over to the south, I believe, or no, they're down the Midwest. Yeah, they got and they Kansas. Get Kansas in round yep. one. Mm-hmm. Like, watch out for Sanford, man. They can play a chore, a chore. He can go down in the post and live. He can play on the perimeter. Like, they run. They've got that NATO style of ball where it's layup or three pointer and like they can wear you down. They got great guard play. So that's another one that I might keep an eye on with a Kansas team that's sort of not really lived up to expectations this year. But that's the other thing I'd want to avoid is mm-hmm. sort of that local team that's close to you that you don't often play. Nothing to lose. Yeah. No extra motivation from that. Nothing, yeah. nothing. That's why you don't ever see Auburn scheduling UAB or Troy in football or Alabama. Like you literally have nothing to gain. Alabama State. No offense, you're going to murder them. But like, it, when it comes to a team that maybe can sneak around and beat you, because you'll never live that down. You will absolutely never live that down. All they got to do is beat you once. The Zach Eady point, and I'm trying to remember which broadcaster was saying this. I thought it was a fantastic point when he was talking about Zach Eady. And look, Braden Smith's got an ankle injury now. Their, their point guard got hurt against Wisconsin, which, which that's a big deal. Guard play has been, been what's cost him. But he made a very salient point. He said, you know, Zach Eady is a guy that's not going to bring you back if you get down. Mm-hmm. Like Dalton Connect can bring you back yeah. if you're down 12 points because you got to methodically get the ball into Zach Eady. He's got to do his thing. Dalton Connect, I mean, we watched him, hell, against Auburn, just three straight possessions. They're like, here, just do it. And he just shot a three from the logo and, and made it. So if Purdue gets down, that's as opposed to Tennessee getting down because I have Tennessee actually beating Purdue in the Elite Eight to go to the Final Four. I'm not a trends guy. I just don't. I, I just don't believe in what happened 40 years ago is going to have any impact on the team this year. But I would take Tennessee. Well, we did Purdue. see this is Dalton Connect's first year at Tennessee. Whereas the Zach Eady experiment, we've seen it multiple times. With multiple Purdue, times with better yeah. guards, to be honest. I mean the J- Ivy, Ivy, and, 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 and Ivy? that's when he had the Williams kid backing him up yeah, at, the at center, yeah. who was even a better passer than he was. So I don't know. It's tough. And if there's an ankle injury with some of the guards, like you're talking about for Purdue, I, the guard, yeah. the guard, Braden like Smith is guard. there. Zach Eady said, "Don't put me on your All American team." If you're not going to put Braden Smith on there too, so that's a—he's the maestro. I mean, if this was football, they'd have kept Purdue out of the yeah. NCAA tournament. Hey, Cole, you talked about your trepidations about expanding the NCAA tournament. Right now, in college football, not only are we tripling the playoff in size, but we can't even play out one 12-team playoff <laughs> before there's already discussions and arguments about going to 14. Now, if the NCAA basketball tournament goes to 138 teams, I'm going to fill out a bracket. I'm going to have a great time. If the football playoff goes to 32 teams, I'm going to be there watching. In every single game, we're going to be breaking it down. I understand. We're football guys. But a lot of people are calling in telling us, hey, I'm, I'm getting done with college athletics. What's your word of wisdom to those people? Uh, well, it's as popular as it's ever been, first and foremost. Here's my fear with the popularity of college sports right now. Specifically, let's just say college football. We are riding a wave of information right now in college football, the likes that we've never seen. And you guys know this like I do because you do a daily sports talk show. I do daily radio show, and I can promise you the transfer portal, coaches being on the move, uh, college football playoff expansion, conference realignment. We've lived on that for the last almost three off seasons now when normally we're sitting there going, all right, who are the three best quarterbacks in the SEC? Yep. Or who's the next coach that might win a national championship that hadn't won a national championship? All the super nerd top five list next to be whatever. We, we do it every off season. We don't have to do that anymore. The NFL has mastered the year-long calendar, whether it's the combine, the draft, free agency, mm-hmm. preseason. Like They know how to be relevant in every single month. College football is now that. Now, we stumbled into this by accident. So if we do move ahead with this sort of conference realignment and this big titanic shift where the Big Ten and the SEC move on and they get some sort of guardrails on it, 
Are we still going to have that? Because I actually do think from a popularity standpoint, it's been great for the sport. Has it equated to better football across the board? No, probably not. But I think more people hear about, oh, this guy goes there. I'm interested. This guy used to play here and now he's there. Okay, let's go. You guys know this when you hear about a kid that hits the portal. Anybody that goes into the portal all of a sudden is a really good football player. Like, oh, yeah. so-and-so from Ohio State's in the portal. You think he's going to come in and start? I don't know, man. He doesn't have any film. I've never seen him play. What do you think? Well, he's a four-star at Ohio State. He's going to come in and make an impact. <laughs> well, hell, sure. I haven't seen the kid play college football, so I don't know what he's going to be. But when he hits that portal, by God, he's a good football player. And if he signs with your team, he's a really good football player. Mm -hmm. So I just wonder, are we going to be able to keep – that those waves of information coming that get more people interested. Because when you talk about TV ratings, for me, this is my opinion, I think TV ratings were meant for people who might not watch games. All of us four are going to watch games. It doesn't yes. matter. My wife might not watch a lot of other games that don't include Auburn. Mm -hmm. Now, if she starts hearing about a guy going here or a story about this guy going there, and we're talking about it every day, or they're in a new conference, she might be interested in that. Super Bowl, she was dialed in. She loves Taylor Swift. Okay? So... People say they're sick of hearing about that. And what, why do we talk about it? Well, it brings in an extra 20 million people that weren't going to watch it. That's why it's important. So if we were to get away from that and it not be as relevant as often, do we kind of come back to earth a little bit? I don't know the answer to that. If yeah. we move on, we're going to get better teams, better logos, better brands against one another on a more regular basis. And maybe that keeps it up and keeps it going. My fear is what's the middle of college football going to do? Because I think most years, if you look at, your Liberties and your Boise's and your South Alabama's and your Troy's and your JMU's and your app States. That's damn good football, man. Yeah, and is. I don't want to see that go away forever. Mm -hmm. So who is the forward thinker out there? Who's the leader out there that is trying to come up with what's next? Because what's happening is you have this giant revenue wheel of money and the big 10 and the sec are squeezing it and squeezing it and squeezing it and squeezing it. So now we're down to about 2 million a school that's going to be going out to these power five schools in Notre Dame. Notre Dame, by the way, showing you the ultimate confidence of we're going to get a media rights deal. It doesn't matter how much y'all give yeah. us from that. We'll be fine. Don't worry about us. But they will keep squeezing it. And eventually these schools are going to have to quit hanging on and trying to sit in there taking their takeouts and look for something else that can be sustainable fiscally moving forward. And I just don't know who that person is. I don't know what that model looks like. I think we would all watch it. I think it could be really good football. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of what is that going to be moving forward. Yeah. Uh, well, it's. I, I think the argument, and, and Cole, I, I, I just wonder, the chaos we have now, because, I mean, you look at the calendar, not just in college football, the one in college basketball opened up literally on the night before, after Selection Sunday. Like, you you yes. had, what, like 145 players in the portal by Monday morning? I, I wonder if organized chaos, maybe shortening the, the window, doing something like that, I think it'll still keep the intrigue. I just want some type of guardrails built on it because right now, like you said, I will not make a projection or a prediction until the end of fall camp. I just won't do it because you got the new spring transfer portal window that's opening. You've got guys that got to win jobs, guys that are going to get hurt in, in fall camp. And it does kind of keep that information wheel going. I just wish it was a little bit uh, more buttoned up at the end of the day. But w when I look at, at the direction that college football is going, it just feels inevitable that that the SEC and the Big Ten are going to keep wielding that power, right? They're just basically walking into every shop on a street and saying, you want protection, here's, pay us this amount of money, we'll make sure nothing happens to you. It's basically the mob without, you know, the other stuff that goes on, allegedly. Uh, but there's got to be some sort of split, right, at some point between the Power Five and the Group of Five, which I would love that. Me too. I would love to have a Power Five playoff, a Group of Five playoff, an FCS playoff, I think that would be absolutely We perfect. used to have that. I mean, when you talk about some of these smaller programs not going away, I'm from Statesboro, Georgia, man. The first football games I ever watched were Georgia Southern playing at Paulson Stadium, and they would win the 1AA championship every yeah. year. But now they're the best they can do is hope for one of those automatic bids, or at least in the 12, the version of the 12 team we're going to get. Who knows what it's going to be in two years from now? But the best they can hope for is to be one of the 12 or 14 playoff spots so that they can get some of that revenue. I'd rather see them compete for so the no national game. championship. So, well, you still have bowl games. You would just kind of do what we saw. You know, we're, we're hearing like the New Year Six is ending their affiliations with with some conferences down the road. You would just basically call some of those extended playoff games bowl games, and then have the periphery bowl games. You know, the Meineke Car Care Bowl, the the you know Cakes.com, 
icing bowl or whatever. They Love just hit bowl. Shane Beamer with a, <laughs> with a bucket full of cupcake icing or something like that at the end. All right, well, whether it's college basketball, college football, Major League Baseball, NHL, Quidditch, suplex basketball in Russia, mm. Bet Online's probably got some, some action on it. Big and it's the best brother. action that you're going to find. They're basically the John claude Van Damme yep. of the sports gambling game. And we love everything about the sports world, just like you do. All right, more states are opening up you know, sports betting now. North Carolina, shout out to our boy Voltar, uh, can now get in on the action. And we know this, this March is going to be unbelievably exhilarating. We've got a bracket challenge. Again, tomorrow's when it kicks off, so you need to make sure you go sign up, betonline.ag. Use that promo code BOOSTER. You get a 50% instant deposit bonus of up to $1,000. So you put $1,000 in. They give you $500. And listen, there's some games right now. Like Alabama-Charleston, I'm taking the over. All right, Kentucky-Oakland, I'm taking the over. Any game that St. Mary's is in, probably going to take the under. But whether it's it's filling out your bracket, whether it's it's taking spreads, over-unders, player props, BetOnline.ag has you absolutely covered, David. If you could, if you could describe BetOnline in one word, what would you? What would you uh, say? perfection. Blaine, what about you? Miraculous. Mer- mm. Wow, that was. I I picked miraculous. No, no I, I want to go change. back. Blaine's word was better. I Blaine's picked. word was better. You can't go back. Blaine's word was no better. No backsies. Uh, but you'll right. always be better when you go to BetOnline.ag to place your bets, create a bracket today. Use promo code Booster for fifty percent instant deposit bonus up to thousand dollars. That's BetOnline.ag. Use promo code Booster. If you're going to bet, bet online. But, uh, Cola, I want to get a little specific here. We're here with Cole Kublik, SEC Network, ESPN, Ma- uh, McElroy, and, and Kublik. It's, he's everywhere. Just turn on the TV. Just go on your computer. You'll find a picture of Cole right when you log in. Uh, but, Cole, looking at, at a couple teams that I find very intriguing this year. You know, we're going to talk about Georgia, obviously. We're going to talk about Ohio State, which it's going to be tough for me to not have those two teams uh, in the Final Four and possibly in the National Championship game if the bracket works out. But just looking at the SEC, Missouri and Ole Miss are almost mirror images of each other, in my opinion, coming into this next season. Now, Missouri's had a little bit more experience. They've played in the SEC Championship games before. But when you're looking at Missouri and Ole Miss, I thought you did a fantastic breakdown on Missouri's uh, offensive line the other day. But which one of those teams do you trust more? Both return quarterbacks, both coming off big years. You got playmakers all over the place, even though Quinchon Judkins went to Ohio State. Ole Miss will be fine. Is there a team you trust more than the other between those two? That's a great question between those two, because I do think that there, there are a lot of similarities. And all of the concerns that we have had with Ole Miss over the years, they seem to have addressed those, and that's mainly been physicality. Uh, you go get one of the best defensive tackles in the league from AM and you add him in. You got Joshua Harris from NC State two years ago, and he was fine. Uh, it looks like J.J. Pagese is actually turning into a legitimate defensive lineman, not just an athlete that they're trying to move around inside a little bit. You go to Washington – a group that won the Joe Moore Award last year, and you get a couple of offensive linemen there, and you're going to be able to plug them in to at least add some depth. I, I can remember talking to Lane Kiffin last year, and he said, we don't run inside zone because we can't move people. Okay. Um, but I do know that Jackson Dart is going to have a legitimate set of weapons. I mean, you've got Caden Priest at tight end. They can be physical. He can be a grinder. He's got legitimate hands. He's got pretty good run after the catch. He's not a super speed guy. But, man, he's probably a guy that every quarterback in college football would want to have. Trey Harris is a 50-50 ball nightmare. Go up and get it, attack the ball. Nobody can do anything about it. And now you bring in the guy who I thought going into last season was the best receiver in the SEC, and that's Juice Wells from South Carolina. Now, is he going to be healthy? Is he going to be interested? Like, a lot of things have to happen there. And, yeah, Quinchon's gone, but Ulysses Bentley is a fire plug, man. Like, he's got juice. He can go. And then you get Logan Diggs who's a downhill bowling ball from LSU that I think if you didn't have all those receivers and the Heisman Trophy winning quarterback last year, he could have easily been a 15, 1600 yard rusher in that LSU offense. So now you have a two-headed monster, a tailback. You've tried to upgrade your offensive line a little bit, big time weapons at receiver, a reliable quarterback. I, I, I know Pete has wanted to upgrade certain portions of that defense. I think one of the bigger gets that Ole Miss got that nobody's talking about is Chris Paul Jr. from Arkansas. Linebacker that was super active last year. They wanted to get bigger at that position. He's apparently a great locker room kid. I talked to Travis Williams, the Arkansas D coordinator, about him. He loves him, raves about him. And they've gotten a little bit bigger at corner as well with Trey Amos from Alabama, former Louisiana, coming over. But, man, I'm going to tell you, this Missouri offense, guys, I I don't know how you're going to defend it. I really don't because Brady Cook has a little bit of mobility. So whether it's zone reads, bootlegs, you can dial that in. And I know Cody Schrader's gone, but – you guys have watched App State over the last couple of years. Yeah. You've seen this little running back that they're bringing in that can hit home runs. 
And then this kid, Marcus Carroll, that they got from Georgia State, he's got Saquon quads, man. Like he's a big physical downhill runner. So now they have a little bit of thunder lightning. I think Armand Mimbu is going to be the best right tackle in the SEC coming back. Uh, you went and got Caden Green, a tackle from Oklahoma, to big plug in on the left side where you lost yep. Javon Foster. Bradley Van Fleet at tight end is going to be a kid people need to know about because he is a monster. He is – He's going to be the Cade Stover at Ohio State over the last couple of years in mm-hmm. college football, like the one tight end that just loves to block people. I don't think this kid cares if he catches the ball all year. He just wants to knock people around. And one thing that they did do on defense, even though you lost a couple guys in that front seven, you lose Rake Straw on the back end, you got a new D coordinator, they upgraded their girth defensively. You get a big D tackle from Florida. You got a couple other defensive linemen that you're bringing in. This kid, Darius Smith, that they got from Georgia at defensive end, like Jake, you, you would know this kind of watching it. I put that spring game on the other day, and all of a sudden you see this kid at defensive end number 19, and his, his fingertips are down to his kneecaps. And you're kind of yeah. like, that guy's different. Like, yeah, That must be the one they got from Georgia. For sure. Regular teams don't get that guy. Yeah. So <laughs> apparently he's got track speed. Like he ran 21 miles per hour on the GPS. He's, re- he's put on like 15 pounds since he's been there. He could be a dominant defensive end for Missouri. So I, it's a toss-up, man. Like I probably trust Jackson Dart a little bit more than I do Brady Cook. And that would be that. the differential there. But I think Missouri, a little more physical. I like their path a little bit more, even though the Ole Miss path isn't that bad. Uh, I'll probably like the Missouri depth just a little bit more. But if you're talking flash, even with maybe, I mean, hell, where are we putting Luther Burton? Top five receiver returning in college football? Uh, yeah. I mean, that receiver hell, he's, he, be legit. He's the, one, he's the one we'd send to fight the aliens when it when it comes to Luther. But, uh, you know, when when it comes to the, the transfer portal, it's funny. We talked about, you know, that guy gets in the transfer portal, he automatically becomes a better player. If there is one place where I will buy into that, it is when a Georgia player that Kirby Smart evaluated and signed got into the portal. <laughs> if there's any, like, rule, like, it's they got so much depth. We got like, better. Dude, this guy's an NFL player, but he's just surrounded by even better <laughs> NFL players. Uh, you know, it, I, I will say, I think Jackson Dart— to see Dart, this inside linebacker that has already been productive that's going to play in Brad White's defense at Kentucky. And they've already sent a ton of linebackers to the NFL. Like, that kid's going to have a monster year. You, you it, just wait. They're just loaded. I mean, there's a, there's a bus full of them. I thought Jackson Dark, uh, Jackson Dart, well, it could be Jackson Dark this year, depending on how it goes. But I thought last year he made the, one of the biggest jumps in actually being able to see intermediate defenders. That was his biggest problem, whether it was on the RPO, whether it was when he was creating. He would throw the ball right to linebackers and down safeties or nickels. But he seemed like he got past that last year, and they've got so many weapons playing. But, I mean, there's look, there's a couple teams that give him a run for their money. Yeah, I agree. I want to talk about Dan Lanning and the Oregon Ducks after the year they had last year with Bo Nix. You lose a lot of guys on that offense and defense. What's the expectations from Oregon this year? You're replacing quarterback, you're replacing a lot of positions, especially up front on the offensive line. How do you see Oregon moving this year? I think you – well, you've got a, some youth on that offensive line that played really well last year, the guys who mm-hmm. are returning. And then I think that we're in we're in a cycle where a couple of coaches have sort of tried to change the mentality and the attitude of what Oregon football has been, and Dan's just going to keep pushing that down that path. Um, he made a great point when somebody asked him towards the end of the season going into the Big Ten, you're going to have different style of football that you're going to have to play. How are you going to adapt to that? And his response was, well, those teams that don't play our style of football are going to have to adapt to us. Yeah. So <laughs> uh, I don't think that Oregon is going to have some issue of, you know, dealing with Big Ten offenses or defenses for an entire season. Just like I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal for Texas and Oklahoma. Like hard games are hard games. Even If you're a good team, a deep team, if you played a lot, it doesn't really matter. They're going to be tough games. I think you have to think college football playoff and I think making a run in the college football playoff. Mm-hmm. Dylan Gabriel is a great college quarterback. There's a reason he didn't go to the draft mm-hmm. because there's certain things that aren't going to carry over to the NFL as well as maybe they will with some other guys, but don't think he can't get it done in college and don't think he doesn't have an understanding of how to be successful. He's got plenty of mobility. They can add that. I think he's going to have enough weapons and I think defensively they're ready to take another step. And he's been another guy that you've seen a lot of the guys that come in through the portal have hit. Like you look at Mark Stoops, you look at Lane Kiffin, I think you look at Dan Lanning. Like the portal hit ratio is over 850 for a lot of these guys. And the ones that know how to do that are the ones that are going to keep plugging and going because they can replace what they lost to the NFL draft and then to the portal. So I think their D-line takes a little bit off of the offensive line and what it has to be. I think Gabriel getting the ball out quickly can take a little bit off that as well. But I see no reason why Oregon shouldn't be a team in the college football playoff. I agree with Jake on Ohio State. 
it's going to be hard for me to not have them be yeah. either one I mean, or two in college football going into the year, especially with Chip and those two running backs. Like, holy hell, I don't even know how you're going to stop it or design a plan for it. But there are some teams in the Big Ten going backwards a little bit. Like, I think Michigan's a massive yep. question mark. I do not know what to think about Michigan right now. So I think a couple of these teams that have been maybe – towards the top, maybe trending upward, like Penn State, I think is interesting. It could be a really good team. But if your quarterback, Drew Aller, doesn't take a step, maybe you're just yeah. kind of a decent team or an average team or a little bit above average team again. And that's where Oregon could slide in and be a 2-3 team in the Big Ten and easily find their way into the playoff. Yeah. Well, it seems to me like Dylan Gabriel's just to a tag of Iloa, zero sugar, or like diet. He's yeah. got to stay Basically. healthy. Well, well, yeah, that's well. So did Tua. That was Tua's mm -hmm. problem, you know. Yeah. And Dante Moore's the backup for them. He's, correct? Yeah, Dante tra yeah. transferred with him, which I thought that was a huge get. Talking about Oregon, I think their game. You know, Cole, I agree with you. I think what Oregon, the way they have built it, was similar to the way that that Kyle Whittingham uh, built Utah. He turned a team that was in a quote unquote finesse co uh, conference into a heavy headed. We're just going to, why did Utah beat USC's ass consistently? They were more physical than they were at the end of the day. I think Dan Lanning has tried to build an SEC team out in the Pac-12, which now goes to the Big Ten. I think that's going to, you know, he doesn't need Rosetta Stone to be able to translate Oregon into the Big Ten. Uh, but no, look Mario was already trying to do that. So that's Mario, exactly Mario right. Mario kind of handed it to him, so, and they're just continuing that, yeah. Which, Cam Ward at Miami, quickly, Cole, what, what do you think? They're a team in the ACC. I know people like to make fun of Mario Cristobal. He needs to learn when to take a knee and, and when to actually, you know, run the ball, but I look at this Miami team, I, I think they could sneak up on some people this year. They've been young up front. Those guys have gotten older. He's recruited really, really well. I, I mean, Cam Ward, he could make a difference here, don't you think? He's going to make a difference. It's just, I wonder in certain situations and sort of every down football, can he be a great college quarterback? Yeah. He loves to move. A lot of times he moves too early. He's a little bit of a risk taker when he gets outside of the pocket. If he can settle down, and that defense can learn to maybe not have to be overly aggressive all the time. I absolutely think Miami could be a team because the ACC, I think, is another one where a couple teams are going to sort of take a little bit of a dive. I'm not saying nose dive and you know win two or three games, but maybe not be in the mix like they were a year ago. Yeah, I mean, look at North Carolina, Florida State with DJU, who I like, but I just don't trust. I feel like we, we know who DJU is. Uh, I will say this: down at the Senior Bowl, Miami had some of the most, and I know those guys are going to the NFL. They had some of the most impressive looking cats there, including James Williams, I believe, oh, at safety. You remember gracious. watching him when he walked out on the Megatron, field? Megatron. That's just a different looking cat. So I'm interested to see how Miami does. Uh, but uh, Cole, great stuff, man. We really appreciate you stopping by. I know you're super busy uh, all the times of year, but but you know, especially this time of year. Tell everybody where they can find your stuff. Uh, tell them about your podcast too, which I check out all the time. If you're a football junkie like we are, right? If you want to put it in a bucket and pour it all over yourself, tell them where they can find it, Cole. Uh, it's Cube Show right here on YouTube. Just search Cube Show. Please subscribe. Uh, we got a Missouri Spring Review that's doing awful numbers right now. So we all need you to go click on that. It's great and, stuff, uh, man. Go, go see what Missouri's doing. We talk a little bit about the playoff. We're in the middle of our SEC Spring Previews right now. And during the season, like we basically take all the SEC games. I watch the film, and I tell you what I saw every week. Yep. So we're adding two teams to that this year. No idea how the hell I'm going to do it on Sunday. So it'll probably get moved to Monday, but we're going to keep trying. Well, Cole, if anybody can find a way, it's you, my friend. I always say this. If there's one position group, if there's one position that I trust this is in any sport, it's center. And Cole Kubik is one of the best ones. Cole, thanks so much, my friend. We really appreciate it. I always appreciate you guys having me. Always. Thank you, man. All right, we're going to get to some reactions in a second. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. But, guys, I need to talk at you for a second. We know we're not, you're not the same as you were 10 years ago. Hell, we know Blaine isn't, all right? No. But he's super muscular. Got that testosterone way up, yeah. in a good way in the safe way. Me as well, right? Cone, how do you think he grew to be eight foot five? All right. We know we're getting older. You have less energy than you used yeah. to. That's due to a natural loss of testosterone. That's not on you. Not on you, bud. That's not on you. All right, we're going to get you back where you need to get. Now it's time you do something about it. That's where Nugenics comes in. You feel revived, energized, and work out like you used to. Just ask Frank Thomas and Doug Flutie. They'll tell you. Mm -hmm. Nugenics Total T Testosterone Booster has testophen. It'll help you turn back the clock. This is basically like a Benjamin Button situation, except Brad you don't Pitt. go all the way back to the <laughs> you go back like to where the best part of yourself was. Mm -hmm. There's nothing to lose and everything to gain. New energy, muscle drive, and even more passion. Yeah, that's right. Get your riz on. So get your complimentary sample when you text 231-231 and you enter keyword crane. That's C-R-A-I-N. My last name is not smelled li spelled like that stupid bird. And if you text now, you'll get a bottle of Nugenic Thermo X. Their newest and most powerful fat incinerator ever, because that fat is out of here, mister. 
with key ingredients to help you lose fat fast and get lean even Here faster, absolutely free. So you just text the number 231231. You enter keyword crane. That's C R A I N. 231231. Enter keyword crane for a fantastic deal today. Texting enrolls, you know, recurring automated text message consent not required to purchase a message data rates. Pine number one doctor recommended brand by primary care physician based on independent survey conducted by IQVI 2022. <gasps> Woo! Bang, bang, bang. You see that? Genix. Total T. Total T. Now back to reactions. All right. So uh, first one up, Pittsburgh Penguins. Please blink, bring that up. The, P- the Penguins announced today that the shipment carrying Yarmir Yager's bobbleheads for the game had been stolen en route to Pittsburgh. Danny Ocean and the crew really got hold of the bobbleheads. L- listen, um, there's some things, like if that had been like a Brinks truck or like, you know, what I rob when I play Grand Theft Auto, I'd, I'd really be feeling for him. But you want to talk about fandom? You want to talk about loyalty? You guys are getting trucks knocked over with bobbleheads of Yarmir Yager in them. And I'll say this, I used to have a headliner of Yaramir Yager back in the day, and I wasn't even a huge hockey fan growing up. To me, this makes me feel so good about the Penguins' future. I don't think it's ever gonna, they're ever gonna lose their luster. You know, I hope Russell Wilson works out, hope Justin Fields works out, but at the end of the day, that's strong. I mean, do, do you go into going to plan the Steelies, or do you just find it and you think it's Did they just knock awesome, over the truck? You have awesome, to go and, and then you plan. open it and it's a bunch of bobbleheads. No, you got to go. In with, they went after this specific. Well, how much money are you making from this? Well, how can you sell these, though? How can yeah, you black can't market? sell? You better have a good fence. You're not going to go on the black market. Anybody know a guy? Head. We ought to ask know a good from fence? Canada. He'll know. Yeah. They pay each other with raccoon pelt. I used to think the pinnacle of sports was just to get a bobblehead made after you. Faults. The pinnacle no. is to get a truck full of people to steal your bobblehead. Do you want to know? You you want to know like the most riz you can put on a on a female? It's like, hey, yeah, they just uh, somebody a group of guys just robbed a truck. They just had all my bobbleheads in it. So the most what you can? Put I don't know on? what you just riz. Said. What are you putting on? That's it? what the kids say now. It's like uh, you know game. Oh, okay. Or whatever. Like that's what they right. call it now. Gotcha. Yeah. Did you have to do your hands like that when you said huh? game? Yeah, it's like it's Riz. Like I'm the <laughs> like if I was a, if I was a Batman uh, villain, I'd be the Rizzler. They said as a result, the bobbleheads will not be distributed at tonight's game, but will be distributed at a later. On on Fourth yeah. and Maple at, at nine thirty tonight, you can come get a bobblehead for half the price. <laughs> oh, doesn't you this think it was you an like, inside job? No, do, do, hey, do, wait, inside doesn't, job. Doesn't That's this remind you though of like when they're like, hey, we're live here from just name somewhere in California where they just robbed everything in the CVS, went across the street and sold it for like $2 less. Yeah. Like it's just, trouble. that's what it seems like to me. Cambodia, can't, man. Can't get in trouble. All right, giant golf ball time. Bring up this giant golf ball. I am of the opinion yes. this is not real. You guys tell me what you think. I, okay, play this. I think I've seen this. There's no way this is real. There's no way. No way. Uh, it looks on. funny. I mean, I want to believe. That's fake. Yeah, yeah. that's fake. Yeah. That's fake. Here's like, the know, I've seen question. enough Transformers movies in my life to know when I see CGI. Oh, CGI. Yeah. <laughs> right? Well, well. here's the real question. Do, could you actually get in a knocker ball and get hit like that, like with something and go that far? I saw someone get in one of those balls and get hit by a truck and land in a tree. Like, like how did go far that far? Back did they go? He went like 50 yards in the air and flew into the top of a tree. See, I just like— And I it's get, real, like— Old school, old school Toyota. Like you could tell, someone shot on an Android. Like it's a real thing. Well, how, how am I not just puking the whole time? Well, you I, might be. Play it again. I mean, play this is how they train so, the astronauts. But first of all, this swings not even close to be hard enough for that yeah. ever to go that far. No, 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 no shot. But because at, at this point, we're getting close. We could play real life rocket. League. Hey, first of all, beautiful course. Well, if you could play yeah. human golf, like not just like <laughs> humans playing, but like just have a human in there. D- doesn't that feel like kind of Hunger Games ish though? You mean like, hey, we got this like redhead. We got this redhead from District Three. Let's go play nine. Like, if your golf ball could talk to you before you hit it. Yeah, I don't want. Is that. this looking at you? slice? He'd be yeah. talking the most trash to me. Slice, yeah, guy. Like, all right, well then it'd be like Happy Gilmore. <laughs> all right, let's bring up uh, Mike Tyson against Jake Paul. This is them at sixteen. All right, so just take a look. Here's Mike Tyson at age oh, sixteen. God. Just death. Look at that. You're dead. Bam. There's Jake Paul at sixteen. <laughs> Stop it. <sighs> no, they're not fighting at 16. Mike Tyson's going to be 58. I saw a video of Mike Tyson at 57. He's still, he's still oh, got it. He's still got it. The thing, like, Jake Paul's never personally done anything to me. Like, his name's Jake. Seen him at the Jake convention. Yeah. You know, every, every August. Uh, it's great to see him there. But, like, part of me, and I guess it's just instinctual, I hope Mike Tyson just destroys him in this fight. 
I just, I really, really hope he does. I just, how did we get here? Because they want to make How money. in 2020? I'm excited about it. I saw That's something the earlier. problem. I saw something earlier that made me not excited about it for a second. I heard rumors that they were going to wear headgear. Mike Tyson and Jake Paul were going to wear headgear. No, I didn't want you to like wear a, gloves. Uh, an exhibition. No, you can't go from fight. biting someone's but ear I, off to I wearing headgear. It. I researched it. It looks like that was false, fake okay, news. Okay, good. And it seems like in the contract they've stipulated. Well, let's no do this. Let's do this. I'm not no watching headgear, no gloves, brass knuckles. I think they're wearing 18 ounce gloves. What would happen to some human's face if Mike Tyson wore brass knuckles? I, at 58, you, you'd have face jelly. Yeah. That's what it'd be. Your, your face would be like sponsored by Smuckers. All right. Well, we're talking about fighting. Uh, Blaine was talking about this Conor McGregor clip last week. So I wanted to react when he oh, was. Oh, the one where he's watching. cheesed? Yeah, let's play it. For the new Hi, movie. Connor. For the new Roadhouse. I'm <laughs> oh, God. Oh, 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 um, oh, oh relax. Talk about your acting debut. Obviously, it's your yeah, first experience. Hard work, hard work, but you know, we got it doing. It's in the bank for life. Yeah. You know, you put something in the bank, something, maybe it's not going to be there for life. You might spend it. This baby is in there for life, and I'm ecstatic about that. Yeah. You know, I got into good, strong shape. I gave it my all. You know, I, I was a little probably green at times, a bit rough, rough around the edges, but for the character that worked. Yeah. And, you know, onwards to the next one if, 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 I, if there is a next one. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Uh, for the, the, I don't know why it looks like he's about to go to a My Chemical Romance concert. Uh, that looks kind of weird. I've watched Conor McGregor talk. He does talk fast. I, and again, I'm not, I have no proof of this, but I do know what Vivance and Adderall and other things do to people. And it just feels like Conor McGregor might have been a little cheesy. Yeah, uh, look, uh, I'm trying to... You know how to put this correctly. Tiptoe. Tip. Do I have to tiptoe? This is not even live. Um, yeah, Conor McGregor looks like he is blowing down. Right? Am I wrong in saying that? No, I don't. Conor McGregor, look, I know a lot is of... Is there anything I have a lot of that? friends. <laughs> look, when you're licking your lips... Yeah. Like that. Like look, looking around. This is, you're not... This isn't... You're not... This is, you're not a part of Slytherin. All right? You're not the guy from the Harry Potter with the stick walking around drinking the juice. Like, that's not who you are. He's a snake boy. Con Conor... Of your mother's arms. Oh, that's Conor McGregor is cheese off of his ass, and Dana White probably wants him nowhere near the UFC. He's so done, he's not gonna right? fight. Nowhere he's near not gonna fight. like that. Mm. Mike Tyson's about. He to looks fight like the Dollar General Batman. Well, it's like why did Conor McGregor just rip this guy's heart out and show it to him? So are y'all or are you not watching the new oh, I'm watching. Roadhouse? I want to see how his acting is. I thought in the trailer, you know, as a, as a paid actor myself. Um, True. You know, and, and we can all attest to this. Lady I want to see his acting chops. Lady Who's Bell. all in the new Roadhouse? Jake Gyllenhaal. Damn and Connor. Well, I know he can act. I'm not Damn it, I got to watch it now. Yeah. Jake Gyllenhaal can act. Odds that it's better than the first one. Not good. They're never plus, good, right? Plus nine. Feet. Never seen them. Connor McGregor in Dirty Dancing 2. I don't even uh, know what Roadhouse is. All right, next one up. Miss Dunk. Do we have the uh, slow motion of the mix Miss Dunk here? Oh, my goodness. Look at this. Did he? No. Oh. Have you ever I've seen never anything seen like that, that? that before? I've watched guys get get stuck, but it's been well. Like the guy the behind him blocked it. But yeah, see, look how the ball hand. sticks watch, in there. Watch, watch, Even watch. if he did, yeah, he gets a piece of well, it. But he doesn't got it for real. See, I've why not? At that, that point, you can't hold on the rim. At that point, you're better off just almost. Do you get a tech if you hold on to the rim and push that ball in? No, but I think they may call it basket interference. Right, because if you touch it once you've released it, you can't touch it while it's on the rim. Yeah, so like you put it in there. If it's let's say that ball was going in a circle on the rim, you couldn't like. But it didn't touch it now. But it wasn't. It's touching in the, the rim. Yeah, but it's in the cylinder. cylinder. The rim. It's the cylinder. It's not just the rim. I mean, the rim represents the cylinder, which goes up. That's why when they look at goaltending, so, they're looking to see if you knocked it out of the cylinder, or if it came off the backboard first, or if it's still going up. Hmm. So there, like technically, every, dunk, right every dunk should be basket interference. No, no, not technically. Because you're throwing it no. through. That doesn't happen. Like, I've never seen that happen. Yeah, I've seen guys get stuck in the rim where the ball hits the rim, like, from the side. For and sure. Stops. Yeah, for but, sure. And that would be basket guys. interference if you then, like, upped it yourself. But I would love to find out. Yeah, I'd that'd be great. To be able to find that'd, out. Be great. that'd be great. Pretty sweet. I'd love to find out, too. All right, two more bonus reactions here. Do we have the graphic for the ancestors? Jake was talking about this the other day. Oh, man. And here it is in order. Dude, so in order to be born, you want to talk about lucky? And I don't even talk about being like a fly or an iguana or a pterodactyl. I'm talking about a human. So in order to be born now, you needed two parents, four grandparents, eight great-grandparents, 
16 second great grandparents, 32 third great grandparents, 64 fourth great, 128 fifth great, 256 sixth great, 512 seventh great, over 1,000 eighth grade, and over 2,000 ninth grade. So for you to be born today from 12 previous generations, you need a total of 4,094 people over the last 400 years. Do you know how many wars and plagues and fights with animals and or aliens? We don't know. You would have to survive to be able to be born today. And we have people that just treat life like, I just watch them, that, like on the My 6,000 Pound Life on TLC, yeah. just, just seeing how many Chick-fil-A nuggets and, and Wendy's Junior bacon well, cheese. They wouldn't be that fine if the only thing they ate was Chick fil A nuggets. They'd be fine. They wouldn't a little be overweight, fine, maybe. Point, point taken. Yeah. yeah. But I life mean, is a gift, man. Look at this. That's insane. 2,048 ninth great grandparents. You want to talk about sneaking through? That's like, think about the stuff they had to go through. Well, think wars, about what they did bro. to get here. Wars, sickness, depression, uh, caves. Hats off to them. Bears, We're dinosaurs. We're out here complaining about this. Bear yeah. dinosaurs. Hey, I, th listen, that's what pisses me off so much when I watch that Dylan Mulvaney music video. I'm like, do you know how many wars you had to just get lucky that bullet went through the hat instead of through your head? And Dylan Mulvaney's out here lying about what it's like to be a girl because he's a dude? Like, it just, I don't know, man. It's just sad. It's sad. People are just ungrateful. Mm. Last one up here. This. this is a video taken in Canada. You saw this one? <laughs> about this is from Canada, them telling people, what did they say, to leave their car keys at the front door so it's easier for thieves to steal their car? Is that what it was? Yeah, so they the cops did it so they could prevent break-ins, the house. What good is not breaking, breaking in if they're going to take my get, car? Breaking in to get their keys to steal their car. Okay, play the video. Let's see what he says exactly. There's also updated advice for all vehicle owners. A message echoed by Toronto police speaking at an Etobicoke safety meeting last month. Constable Marco Ricciardi had a new message for vehicle owners who keep their fobs in Faraday pouches. To prevent the possibility of being attacked in your home, leave your fobs at your front door. Because they're breaking into your home to steal your car. They're, they don't want anything else. A lot of them that they're arresting have guns on them and they're not toy guns, they're real guns. They're loaded. That's why Galinsky says they will be installing the door stops and taking YPR's advice seriously. They're installing these. But she'd like more action from police as well. Bro, I, I don't know how y'all still live in Canada. Here's, you know what helps that? My gun. My gun helps that. No, you're not allowed to have that. No, yeah, well, they're guess allowed what? to have where I live, yeah. I'm allowed to have. You want to come into my house? I know the territory, buddy. Why am I sitting upstairs with a bead on you the minute you hit Look. the driveway? I got floodlights. I got an alarm. You walk into my house. You want to talk about You're not making it to your 2049th ancestor. <laughs> you're taking one right between. I turned into Denzel Washington from the yeah. Equalizer. That's why Canada, you know what? Like, I, Kirk, I don't know how y'all do it. Kirk, our Sky neighbor Hook, to the north. We got to go get Kirk out. We got to break into my house. We got to get y'all out. Please, I'm begging you break into what my house. What good is not Blaine breaking leaves in the door open hoping you're going to break gonna in. He's going to walk in. I'm just going to go through the kitchen on a tricycle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> with, the, with the little mask on. You broke into the wrong house, yeah. buddy. Blaine said, well, what did Blaine say that one day? You walk in there and Blaine's butt naked in the kitchen with just a Batman mask but, on. Yeah. Hey, you made it. Yeah, Congrats. I just have the top of a yeah. nun no. costume on. Yeah, here's what I do. You walk in, I hold you at gunpoint, we go rob your house. Yeah, you walk in, I'm petting a snake. <laughs> The, the best part of that video is the older people who are listening to him, and you can tell they're like, okay, we're Canadian, so we want to be really, really nice, but everything you're saying makes no sense. Yeah. Oh, those old people are pissed. Well, here's what I'm doing. I'm moving. God, man, Florida sounds great this time of year. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's, they'll oh, give you a boy. gun. Oh, right, when you pull them across the border of Florida, they're 2024, like, 2024, man. I know. Just craziness. Absolute craziness. All right, guys. Well, you excited to do the live stream tomorrow? Can't Let's wait. We are live streaming the first round of the NCAA tournament. Most of it. First game comes on 11.15 a.m. Central. We're going to go a little bit before. We're going to unveil our brackets. Remember, we got the $50,000 bracket challenge at betonline.ag. Head over there. Use that promo code booster. We're going to be updating the standings on whose bracket's doing what. Uh, we want to make sure we're going to get in the chat a lot. We want to know who y'all's upsets are, uh, who you're banking on, and who's eventually going to disappoint all of us because, you know, True. we my bracket's going to probably be burnt. But right now, it's perfect. Right now, it's perfect. perfect. Right now, I got the perfect bracket. Because I've asked four people that don't know what they're doing, including Chris Ben, the climate activist, my yes. brother-in-law. Uh, we appreciate y'all. Going to go, like I said, live stream tomorrow. No show in the morning, but the live stream will start uh, around 11 o'clock. Make sure you come hang out with us. And 
like 2024 March, Mad March Madness not starting, we're going going. Gone.